All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Aloha Press Podcast and YouTube show. My name is JC out here in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks for joining me on this beautiful Tuesday. First and foremost, we got an issue, an apology. It is, it's a, it's a one man show today. It's uh, unfortunate Jeff was unable to make it this this week. Um, we are planning to do a another show uh, either later this week with maybe some predictions out of Memorial. We'll get to that maybe a little bit later in the show, but. Got exciting news, okay, with the uh, the podcast and YouTube show. We're going to be going live out of beautiful Edgewood, Tahoe. Jeff and I and one of our associates is going to be making the trip up to uh, Edgewood, Tahoe to get some footage, to get some, uh, you know, some content in preparation for the Aloha Press Classic. And we're really, really pumped up about that because I'm, one, going to be in California, which is exciting. We're going to be hopping on the plane, heading to the West Coast, to the beautiful home game, and I own California, which we're really excited about. Uh, we're going to be hosting our second event of the year, which is one of those things that you you look at and you realize like, man, without you guys listening, paying attention and like following our content and following our dream of of going all in and chasing that Aloha Press uh, lifestyle, we really couldn't make this happen. And I want to thank just a, a couple folks before we get into the show. It's kind of making you know making things you know a reality to be able to give back to the community like we always do. Uh, with some of our events and with the home game um I'm, i'd really like to uh to thank our title sponsor which is going to be acorn hills out in sutter creek california and then also some of our other sponsorships uh merriman sports and training uh loha products growing young matic vukovic uh and then we got spring valley excavation wade's farm and also jill at sierra homes and properties up in pioneer selling your guys's homes for you um you know, without our sponsorships and without the people helping us, supporting us, doing what we want to do in our life, we could not present a product like the home game and or to be able to take trips like going to Edgewood and getting that content. Um, so it's exciting. And I really appreciate all the, the sponsors and all the support and the partners who have helped us grow and get to where we want to get to, uh, which is back to the West Coast, play a little bit of golf. And, uh, you know, be able to battle at the home game, which I'm really excited about. We got everything kind of winding up for the tournament. Uh, everything's kind of just coming together, which is exciting. We've got flags, golf tees, polos, everything's just hats. It's just it's absolutely just really remarkable. Uh, another couple housekeeping things that I wanted to let you guys know. Um, October 9th and 10th in 2021 is going to be the dates for the Aloha Press Classic up at Edgewood Tahoe. Uh, so put that on your calendar. We're gonna be putting out uh, some of those web pages so you guys can actually make the signups so that we can get this thing paid for um, uh, because it's uh, Edgewood wants their money, which is not a surprise. So it's, it's a fine establishment. They don't want they don't want a bunch of hillbillies coming up there and uh, not not paying their way, which you know, which I'm pretty excited about. We'll be able to uh, reach out to uh, Randy at Edgewood. If you guys are ever planning a golf tournament, reach out. We can uh, we can go in contact with the guy who's absolutely incredible. So this this week's podcast this is a this is a solo show which is always challenging at times. This is one of those things that you got to keep the conversation going because the only one talking back to you is the guy in your head, which is uh, a bit scary sometimes. But it's not that scary. It's not that terrible. So we're going to be recapping the uh, the Colonial chasing Kokrak, getting the victory. We're going to dive into some of the news about Tiger Woods. Augusta National's got a new uh, clubhouse, and then we're also going to be discussing the Bryson and Brooks, God, nonsense going on in the world and attempts to get the $40 million. We might be touching on the Ryder Cup and also uh, the Senior Tour. Senior Tour had a major championship. Um, so look forward to that. Stay to the end. Got a special announcement for you, uh, which we're pretty excited about. So enjoy the show. As always, you know, hit bombs, attack pins, and Aloha Press. Wearing all black. Aloha. Here with JC and Jeff. <laughs> we ain't no time for school today. Hitting bombs. Hey, watch this punch cut in way. Replace your Marshall with cart girls. They're better looking. They're serving drinks. Got to hit bombs off the tee. Bill talking about a guy taking a shit in the cut. Mahalo. That's what we did fire side with Bill. Fire the stick. Hit bomb and attack the pin. All right, welcome back. This is, uh, this is again a beautiful podcast, you know, solo show. This is uh, these are always fun to do, um, always really unique. It's always uh, pretty special. So let's just dive into it. The Colonial Charles Webb Challenge out in beautiful Texas 
And sure as shit, we've got the big boy, Jason Kokrak, getting the victory. And he does it in a special way. It's one of those things that you look at him and you realize this guy in the last 17 starts has two victories now. He, he chalks it up with Stuart Sink, Bryson DeChambeau, in this particular PGA Tour season. He's one of the three guys who's gotten multiple victories, which is, you know, you look at him and you realize, like, one, he's not exactly the most young buck in the world. I mean, he's only a few years older than I am. But in the golfing world, it seems like he's coming into his own. He's finally gotten to those two victories, and he's done it with some competition. I mean, you look at the Colonial and you realize – you know, coming down the stretch, I mean, he had to play in a final group with Jordan Spieth, who was playing great golf. Jordan Spieth, arguably, is probably playing the best golf in the last five months, five, six months. I mean, you look at Jordan Spieth's, you know, record. He's been in final groups week in and week out. Uh, you know, the PGA, the the waste management. I mean, he's got his own victory, um, you know, just a couple weeks ago, which is, which is pretty remarkable, especially in Texas. You think about Texas, and you realize Jason Kokrak is not, he's an Ohio guy. Okay, he is not born and raised. He might look like he's born and raised in Texas, but the thing about Jason is he had to battle some of the, the fans, some of the some of the chirpiness. I mean, it was a Jordan Spieth fan fan base the entire day, and Jason Kokrak definitely didn't play his best golf, but so did Jordan Spieth. Jordan Spieth was absolutely just spraying and praying it. At one point in time, him and Jason was telling Dottie Pepper that they just had no clue where the ball was going, and. That's kind of scary as a PGA Tour player. I mean, you're coming down the stretch. You don't really have, you know, that big of a lead. It was one of those things that, you know, in the last four or five holes, Jason was making bogeys. Jordan Spieth was unable to, like, put together any, like, really birdie opportunities. But then you had, a, you had this, like, weird group that was just chasing him, which was, you know, I don't want to say it was, it was awkward. It was weird. But you had guys like uh, Charles Hoffman, Pete Kizer, Munez, you know, really trying to get it to that point where it was like kind of interesting. And unfortunately it just, it just didn't happen. I mean, you did have a couple guys come out and uh, you know, Ian Poulter threw out a, a low number, Sebastian Munoz. I mean, they all got to that, you know, 65, 68 number to get to that 10 under, but it was just no faltering Jason Kokrak, even though he looked a little shaky coming down the stretch. The thing that I recognized was, Jordan Spieth, good God. I mean, he dumped it in the water on 18 and just had gave himself no chance at all to make it interesting. Jason Kokrak was able to two-putt uh, for a par on 18 to shoot even, to get to 14 under, and to win, to win again at Colonial. I mean, the guy's going to have an unlimited amount of starts there. I mean, he's 39 years old. He's going to be able to play when he's like 75 at Colonial, which is incredible. I mean, just a fun stat to, uh, you know, to, to get at. Keith Clearwater has won this event. Uh, the last time, I think the last time he made a cut on the PGA Tour was uh, back in 2001. He, unfortunately, at, you know, at 100, um, shot plus 14, you know, unfortunately was cut. But has that, like, you know, unbelievable exemption when you look at it. And uh, you realize that Jason Kokrak gets his second victory. And he not only won, like, that unlimited, you know, amount of starts at colonial which we're going to see him for the next 20 years playing this event you also got to see him you know when the when the dodge power wagon i mean really cool trophy like I, I mean besides the aloha press classic giving out the rope chain i mean you look at this tournament and it is really special because it has three trophies i mean they give you a badass car i mean i would gladly give out a Dodge Power Wagon, especially a 19, I think it was a 1964, you know, pickup truck, really fit Jason Kokrak style, things, things sat on like 37 inch tires, you know, old school 16 inch uh, rims, which I enjoyed, a little, little baby blue, but the thing that I don't understand is, God, we got to give these guys three trophies, like he's already walking away with 1.3 million dollars, but you also got to dress them up in that horrible, you know, picnic style jacket the plaid oh i mean it was inspired but you know you know i think it was scotland somewhere i can't remember but and then you get this like six foot trophy like it's, there's a lot of things to take home like i mean i get it like you want to congratulate a, a victory which you know absolutely it's incredible but god how am i gonna how am i gonna haul this crap to the you know to the airport like net jets does not have a freaking tow truck to bring my power wagon and my nine foot trophy and this horrible jacket i mean 
you look at it and you realize like it is awesome it's absolutely beautiful but it's kind of over the top like the truck's awesome the only thing that i think you should be required like if you win the truck jason kokrak i i think you either have to you got to drive it home i think that's the, i think that's the rule i mean congratulations Josh, jason kokrak getting the victory uh i'm a fan of him he seems kind of like a straight nose kind of you know give it to you raw type dog you know which is which is entertaining it's good but the thing that like you realize that about this particular event jason kokrak is getting a second victory kind of puts him in a spot where the Ryder cup all of a sudden he might be in the mix and and you look at the Ryder cup standings and this for me at least i mean the the, the single team event which is just you know, one of those fun events. I love the Ryder Cup. I love watching the Ryder Cup. I, I have a lot of fun, you know, just being involved in that that event. Jason Kokrak sits at 13th spot. They're, they're only taking 12 guys. And it's one of those things, the final six spots are picked by the captain. And, uh, you know, to give you kind of a rundown of, of who's actually in the in the Ryder Cup currently, the top six are Dustin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau, Justin Thomas, Brooks Kepka, Colin Moore Cower, and Xander Shoffley at that top six spot, you know, and then falling out these, those other guys who are kind of trailing Patrick Reed, Tony Finau, Jordan Spieth, Daniel Berger, Webb Simpson, Billy Horschel. And then you've got, you know, Jason Kokrak sitting there. Could we have a Stuart sink, Jason Kokrak, you know, Phil Mickelson Ryder cup. I mean, these are, these are things that you just, you just don't expect. You don't expect to see, you know, coming down, you know, in, in May, you know, on Memorial Day where, you know, these guys have a really good opportunity. I mean, sitting at 17th at the at the Ryder Cup standings is Phil Mickelson. Not far out of it. Hell, you even got a guy like Will Zalatoris, who isn't even a member of the PGA Tour, but might be on the Ryder Cup. And you look at it and it's it's exciting. You have a lot of talent right now. And it's pretty incredible. Like the, you know, the American side has so much to offer. I mean, it, it is also scary that, you know, sitting at 23 is Matthew Wolf, which we haven't seen him play in a while. But, I mean, even even you got Stuart Sinks in at, at number 28. Could be a captain's pick. You never know. So, uh, a couple notables at the Colonial to wrap it up. Phil Mickelson, unfortunately, missed the cut by one shot. Um, you know, was it, was it expected? Do we think Phil Mickelson would go back-to-back -back victories? I mean, the guy is fasting for 36 hours after a major championship victory. I mean, did he want to miss the cut on purpose? I mean, it was pretty much halfway, okay? He, he got on a plane with the PGA, flew to Texas, and now he's headed home, I would assume, in preparation for the, not the Ryder Cup, excuse me, the U.S. Open. Um, you know, I, I think he needs a little rest. I mean, because the PGA Championship, I mean, Phil, we don't need you back-to-back -back weeks. We really don't. We just need you to keep winning majors, which is absolutely incredible. But then you realize that if you're listening to the show, watching it on YouTube, I am horrible at picking golfers lately. Jeff is absolutely kicking the crap out of me. Um, I, I took a, a native Texas guy. I don't, I don't think he's native to Texas, but I think he played well in Texas for the most part. I picked Patrick, Patrick Reed, and sure enough, he bogues 18 to absolutely kick me in the teeth and go down five. Uh, you know, Jeff picked uh, Colin Morikawa, you know, to, to kind of wrap up that T14, shot five under. You know, definitely, he didn't play his greatest golf uh, on Saturday and Sunday, but got a, got a top 20, which is pretty remarkable. So wrapping up Colonial, I go down five bottles. I mean, at some point in time, I mean, you guys are gonna have to stop listening to me and start listening to Jeff if you're putting money on uh putting money on the show, which is not shocking, not surprising. Um, but uh it's one of those things that, you know, it is what it is. But let's get to the other events of of the week. I mean, major championships aren't over. We've got the senior PGA championship. And you got to give it, you know, you got to give a shout out to, uh, I'm going to screw his name up, like always, Alex Kajeka wins his second major championship at the PGA Championship, the senior PGA Championship, um, out at Southern Hills, you know, goes out there and shoots, uh, looks like a 367, uh, you know, victory over Tim 
Petrovic, and uh, you know, kind of kind of incredible story. I mean, this guy who you know, I don't want to say as a uh, a good history of the PGA Tour. I mean, he's only had one victory in in the in the Puerto Rico Open back in 2015. Goes back to back in major championship. He he chalks up two major championships in 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 two starts. The last guy to do that on the senior tour is Jack Nicholas. And you look at the product of the senior tour and you realize like back then the senior tour was made for kind of like that highlight reel, kind of those 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 opportunities for guys like you know, Jack Nicholas, uh, and s- some older guys that I'm, you know, uh, Freddie Couples, you know, uh, I don't have a laundry list of uh, senior guys, but I'm just saying, like, it was made to, like, really show off them and kind of give them, like, that last final ditch effort of, like, some cash. And, uh, you know, you get a guy who's Monday qualifying in these senior tour events, and he's winning two major championships. And I have nothing, I know nothing about this guy. It's because we don't we don't really pay attention to guys on the senior tour, but I thought it was a good, I thought it was worthy, newsworthy to bring up. Congratulations, Alex. I mean, I'm assuming you also play in the Puerto Rico Open, which is you know, which is good, which is exciting. But you know, it's all said and done. It's the senior championship. Unfortunately, I didn't watch it. I was watching the uh, the Colonial. Um, but uh, with that being said, another couple things in the news. Um, that we, you know, wanted to touch on. Tiger Woods was seen and was interviewed by uh, Golf.com, uh, or excuse me, Golf Digest, and he spoke out. Um, pretty much, Woods uh, communicated that, you know, the entire, you know, rehab that he's going through has just been one of those, the most challenging thing that he's ever done. And in his word, he said, uh, has been an entirely different animal. Um, You know, my physical therapy has been keeping me busy. I do my routines every day and focus on my number one goal right now, walking on my own and uh, taking it one step at a time, he told Golf Digest. And it was, he was seen, and I think he was out at a soccer game uh, with his family. He was seen walking around on crutches. The boot is gone. Um, And it's it's one of those things you realize, like, Tiger Woods is human and but has time and, and his whole outcome and his whole goal in life is just to be walking on his own, which we hope. And uh, it's one of those things that you know, I look at it and realize, like, good God, this, this man was, you know, for most of us, many of our heroes, and uh, we just want him to get better. So good news, good news for the most part that he is well, up, you know, kind of walking on crutches. I don't, I don't know how exciting that is, but um, Augusta National. I mean, getting a new clubhouse. It uh, we we had a bunch of drone footage that, uh, from looks like Eureka Earth out on Twitter, kind of showing some 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 things going on. They're building apparently a new clubhouse, which you will get to see if you're a member at Augusta National and or a guest. Unfortunately, if you are not, you will not be seeing the new clubhouse, which looks like. But they've also been adding uh, and some making some changes to holes 15 and 17. It was kind of like you know, guess that they might be doing some things to kind of soften uh, some spots to give guys the ability when you're hitting driver out there not to be running their drives into uh, apparently the trees uh, that they had a few problems. But uh, one of those things that, you know, popped up earlier in the week, Bryson Brooks Kepka. If you're not a reader of the newsletter, I would recommend, I would highly recommend reading the newsletter. Go sign up to alohapress.com uh, slash newsletter and you're going to be able to get you know, some of these links that I find, uh, we had a guy uh, made a little, you know, symphony of, uh, you know, little piano work of Brooks and Bryson and all the drama that's been unfolding these last couple of years uh, from, you know, Brooks making fun of him uh, in regards to maybe taking some steroids last year, you know, bulking up to, uh, to Bryson, who's just on this meme campaign after the news about the match that happened um, that's going to happen here in the next couple months. And it's, you know, it's one of those things that you, you realize, like, is the drama actually real? I mean, the PJ Tour, you know, had the secret, like, $40 million for the top 10 players who are well-known in the PJ Tour and who, have, who are making, who are bringing an audience, really using their social media following 
to go out there and get them some more attention. And is this just another ploy? Is this to bring some drama? Is the PJ Tour behind this like, hey, you know, the leaked footage of, of Brooks Koepka just absolutely annoyed. I don't want to say, I, I don't think Brooks Koepka is a very good actor. I think he truly is an asshole. And I think he truly is, has some hatred towards anyone that stomps around the metal spikes. And I think there is some hatred there. I just don't know if it's a little plan behind the scenes of like, hey, Brooks Bryson, you guys are two great characters for the PGA Tour. We love the, uh, we love the negativity. We love the news. Because anything that these guys do in regards to each other, it's talked about. We talk about it here on the show. It brings an audience. And it brings that Jerry Springer aspect to the PGA Tour. That WWF, you know, some of that nonsense, some of that drama that we really, like, strive to get to. And you think that maybe either the PGA Tour and or Brooks and Bryson are like, hey, let's cash in on some of this money. I mean, we're, we hate each other anyways. We might as well, you know, get paid to do it. And I think at some point in time, it's going to come out that these guys might be truly, you know, don't hate each other as much as we might think. I mean, keep in fact, like, the news media put out there several years ago about Brooks and DJ being, like, best friends. And it was cleared up saying, hey, like, we're actually not friends. Like, we, yeah, we might live in the same city. We might have the same physical trainer. But it's not like we're having barbecues on Saturdays together. We compete on the PJ Tour, and we get along for the most part, but we're not best friends. So I don't know what it's actually happening, but I don't know what's really going on. But if you need the link, go sign up the newsletter, and I'll send you the link in regards to this uh, the symphony this guy put together. It was really incredible on YouTube. A little piano action about all the drama that's unfolded with uh, with Brooks and Bryson. But... The match number five. You realize that the match was one of those events. Tiger, Phil, $9 million out in Vegas. Had a sexy appeal to it. You got to see two of the greats, and you never knew like when we're actually going to get that battle again. And Jeff and I predicted it on our last podcast. You know, Go check it out at Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe, like, and also leave a comment. It helps the algorithm tell everyone that you know we produce a halfway decent show. But we get another match. TNT is presenting match number five. It's going to be team event again with their hot shot, most recent major champion. Phil Mickelson and Tom Brady are teaming up and going against Bryson DeChambeau and Aaron Rodgers out on TNT on July 6th. It's a Tuesday event. It's going to be at the, uh, the Reserve at Moonlight Basin. The breathtaking Jack Nicholas signature course in Big Sky, Montana. I look at this event and realize, like, God, they added a just a spaz. I don't know if I'm going to be able to listen to Bryson DeChambeau for five hours, to be honest with you. I enjoy Tom Brady. I enjoy Phil Mickelson and their banter and their, like, communication together because they have a real, like, unique aspect. Phil Mickelson, like, is Tom Brady's personal, like, golf coach because good god tom brady i mean yeah he might have hold out in the last match he was involved in with tiger woods he is not a very good golfer he might look like he he might play to an eight at the uh the putt putt course but in reality he's like a 18 20 handicap and then you got aaron Rodgers, who's a legit scratch golfer i mean the big boy from chico california is going to be teamed up with another big boy bryson dechambeau a couple of california guys who are going to be playing in this event and I look at the match and I realize, like, this is a great avenue. This is great content. I enjoy him for the most part. Do we need Tiger Woods back in the mix? Absolutely. That's that kind of that kind of just adds some flavor to it. But I think it's going to be entertaining. I think it's going to be fun. But with all this drama, I mean, between Brooks and Bryson, like, let's get those two idiots together. Let's put them head to head. Let's put some money on the line. I would love. I would absolutely tune in on a Monday night to watch some of these guys. You know, like Brooks and Bryson. You know, go at it. And if they tie on the 18th hole, maybe they, you know, put on the sock and boppers at the end of the match and duke it out. You know, first knockout, first, you know, I mean, we don't we don't want to, you know, get these guys too injured because we want to enjoy them playing on the PGA Tour, but maybe they'll listen to some of my takes. They probably won't. I'm sure TNT does not give a crap of what the Aloha Press thinks, but it's one of those things, I mean, wrapping up the show, I mean, for the most part, 
it's going to be entertaining. I, I look forward to the match coming in July 6th and in beautiful Montana at the Jack Nicholas course. I'm not a fan of Jack Nicholas courses. I don't have a I don't have a beef with Jack Nicholas courses, except they're absolutely too tight. But getting into this week's predictions, I know Jeff is not here to make the predictions for you, but we got some power rankings. The Memorial Tournament presented by Nationwide. Uh, it's going to be at the Jack Nicholas course. This is Jack's tournament in beautiful Ohio. It's one of those events that last week you realized that or not last week, excuse me, last year during the pandemic, we had an event here, you know, after Colonial, back-to-back -back events at this at this golf course, excuse me, um, with two different, you know, victors. We had Colin Morikawa, then we had John Rahm uh, getting the victory done. And you really should look at this event. I mean, they the, the golf course was dying. It was, they were killing it. They were making it so difficult last year uh, when John Rahm won, which was absolutely entertaining. But it looks like Jack Nicholas has done some a few renovations, so we're going to be privy to that. Um, you know, looking forward to some of his architectural aspect. I don't actually give a crap about his architecture, to be honest. With you. I I don't think he's that great of an architect. Um, I think he's going to make it incredibly difficult for these guys. It's going to be incredibly tight, tall grass. Um, but you're going to have a guy who didn't play particularly well uh, last year, Bryson DeChambeau. You know, leading the charge. Uh, looks like he's going to be you know ranked rather high. In the power rankings, he's ranked for number one. It looks like in the, uh, you know, the odds spectrum. Uh, looks like I don't have the odds yet. When it comes to uh, the uh, the memorial, you got Bryson DeChambeau. I mean, it, it look, he's going to be, you know, favored number one. And then you got Jordan Spieth, John Rahm, Rory McIlroy is going to be in the mix this week. Colin Morikawa, Lou Wu stays in. Hideki Matsuyama took a week off last week. Xander. Justin Thomas, Corey Connors, Patrick Cantley, and Tony Finau wrapping the uh, the top 12 up. It's it's one of those things that I look at the event, and you realize a guy last year who played particularly well at this event who hasn't played particularly well recently, but I, I'm going to have to go with uh, – I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with John Rahm. It's one of those, it's one of those events that, you know – Back-to-back -back champion, I think he's going to play particularly well. He hasn't played particularly well recently, but I think this is one of his more favorite golf courses. He looks like an Ohio-type guy um, out at the uh, Memorial. Looking forward to it. It's always a good, strong field event. Um, it's it's one of those productions that the PGA Tour does a pretty good job of presenting it out there and giving us some good content. Uh, last year was absolutely incredible um, with, with Bryson getting in arguments with uh, – like an anthill, uh, and then also with some of the spectators. And at one point in time, he looked like he might have cheated at one point in time, but it is what it is. He also made it like a 10 on a par 5, which was entertaining. Looking forward to hopefully makes one of those. And maybe it'll give a little more content for uh, Brooks Kepka to uh, you know send out in the old memes fashion. Um, so looking forward to the, uh, the Memorial Tournament. It is one of those things that I am going to be in California watching the damn thing. So looking forward to that. So wrapping up the podcast, I really appreciate you guys. You know, tuning in, listen to me ramble for the last, uh, I don't know, 28 and 29 minutes. It's always, uh, it's one of those shows that, you know, we miss Jeff. He brings the energy. He brings some of the takes that I just, you know, he brings the, he, he brings the knowledge. He brings the, you know, he's five, he's up five bottles. I can't hate the guy. But it's one of those things where we're going to be back in California when you guys are listening to our next show. Um, so let's wrap it with that. Really appreciate it. Look out. We're going to be doing some more things on Instagram. Golf Human Newsletter is going to be, you know, getting a little bit better. Um, look out for some of the content in regards to the home game. Uh, I'm very excited about that. Beautiful Island, California. Um, and then also, uh, again, dates. October 9th, October 10th, the Aloha Press Classic. Go get your rooms now. We are going to be staying in the Hard Rock, I believe, like we did last year. And we've got a couple ideas about some of the events that we're going to be holding, not just the golf tournament itself, but also like some of the extracurricular activities. You know, some of the things that I learned in Cancun in our last event, the Aloha Press Retreat, was the people that we bring to these events are incredibly competitive. I've never seen so much competition in my life. When, you know, a few handful of uh, men and women are, are intoxicated playing beach volleyball. I mean, 
So we might have some of those activities. Looking forward to that. So as always, really appreciate you guys leaving a review on our podcast. Please hit the subscribe button. Really helps the algorithm and promote our show to kind of help this thing grow. I think we're at like five or 6,000 downloads, which, you know, for our small show, this is pretty incredible. Um, but uh, as always, really appreciate you guys listening and uh, tuning in every week. So with that being said, as always, hit bombs, attack pins, and Aloha Press. Cheers, guys. Wearing all black. Aloha. Here with JC and Jeff. <laughs> we ain't no time for school today. Hitting bombs. Hey, watch this crunch cut my way. Replace your Marshall with cart girl. They're better looking. They're serving drinks. Got to hit bombs off the tee. Phil talking about a guy taking shit in the cut. Mahalo. That's what we did fireside with Phil. Fire the stick. Hit bomb and attack the pin.